Christopher Walken's hair may be as wild as a brush fire, but everything else about him is friendlier, softer, and more amused than you can anticipate. Walken turns 77 years old in 2020 and walks a little stiffly. However, his famous cat-like blue eyes dart with unclouded vigor. Over the last five decades, he's made over 100 films. Some have been terrible, while some have been great. Claiming an actor is so talented they could make reading the phone book aloud a riveting experience is a classic bit of praise. It's definitely true of Walken. There's simply no way of predicting how he'll read a given line. And that tension keeps his fans always at the edge of their seats. While he hasn't literally read out his phone book so far, he has managed to do the next best thing in two talk shows. In 1993, he was featured on a British talk named Saturday Zoo to read out The Three Little Pigs. And if you missed it, you can still guess that it was worth a watch, if only for the surreal experience of encountering an Oscar winner claim, deadpan, he was a smart pig, followed by some oink oink pig sounds. Walken returned to the BBC in 2009, this time appearing on Friday night with Jonathan Ross to narrate the lyrics to Lady Gaga's Poker Face. He read the verses with warmth and naturalism, but impressed everyone with his masterstroke when he got to the chorus, which was wordless, with his Oh! Oh, oh! Oh! Ah! Oh, e! Oh! And if you need more evidence Walken is possibly from another planet, the actor claimed he's never owned a cell phone or even a computer. The Oscar winner recently dropped the bomb in a virtual appearance on the set of The Late Show. He's our go-to actor when it comes to anything menacing. But does this new King Louis have a mysterious side to himself? Especially one that restricts him from using a mobile phone or computer? We'll get to that. But if you're liking this story so far, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Walken is not opposed to technology and admitted he managed to get to it a little too late. He also thinks he's reached a certain age where it just has passed him by. Walken has also confessed he's never sent an email, text, or tweet. While many people feel like they're deprived if they don't have the latest gadgetry, but Walken claims it's not even that difficult. He says mobile phones are similar to a watch. If you actually need one, you'll see someone else has already got it. He says only under one condition does he use another's phone, and that's when someone has to dial it for him. Walken and his brothers were child stars. Christopher Walken grew up in New York and was the middle child. He had two brothers. His father was a baker, and his mother had a fascination for show business, so she took the boys to TV auditions. That's how Walken ended up in cameo roles. Despite childhood success, Walken says he was merely following his friends. Walken was a lion tamer. Walken has long been in show business. He started early at the age of 10 with background roles on TV, including one opposite to iconic comedy stars Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. When Walken was just 16, he decided to take up an unusually exciting job, becoming a lion tamer. Lion taming may sound deadly to you or me, but per Walken's description in Vanity Fair, it was pretty easy. He said he took the job to earn some extra money during summer vacation. He added further it would be more appropriate to refer to himself as a lion tamer's assistant. As Walken explained, the head performer did not have any children and had asked Walken to dress up in an identical outfit to resemble his imaginary son. When their act would finish, there would be one lion, and it was his duty to have this lioness do a few tricks. Sheba, the lioness, according to Walken, was obedient as a dog. Christopher was Madonna's guardian angel. Remember Walken's soaring act in the Weapon of Choice music video? Well, that was not Walken's only music video performance. In 1992, he also appeared as Madonna's guardian stalker, keeping an eye on her self-destructive activities in Bad Girl. Christopher Walken, theme park ride host. When you visit Walt Disney World, you meet Mickey Mouse, Queen Elsa, and Cinderella. But when you go across town to Universal Studios Florida, you could meet someone more important, Christopher Walken. An opening day attraction in 1990, Earthquake, the big one, showed guests how some of the effects had been used for the film Earthquake. In 2007, the attraction was turned into a disaster. In the newly tweaked version, Christopher Walken started playing the role of director Frank Kincaid and welcomed guests to experience the production of his film, Mother Nature. The actor's part was implemented with the help of Musion technology, the use of which we also find in the wizarding world when Dumbledore takes part in the queue of the Forbidden Journey. The sequence with Walken is spectacular, with interaction involved with a real team member on stage. The audience then goes into another area with green screen technology and observe how the action scenes were shot. Finally, guests can board the tram to witness the original earthquake ride. However, in Disaster, after the spectacular tram sequence, there's a bonus. The Rock Johnson in Mother Nature. It has some tongue-in-cheek scenes starring The Rock mixed with shots the guest performs in the attraction. Walken got his stage name when he was a dancer. 
Walken is Ronnie to his friends and family. His mother named him Ronald after Ronald Coleman, a Hollywood star. So how did he wind up as Christopher? He got the stage name from Monique Van Vuren, a previous boss. In the early days of his career, Walken used to be a dancer in Monique's nightclub act alongside two other men. Monique was known to introduce her teammates with fake names. And one day she tried out the name Christopher, and nobody knows why, but that one stuck. Walken starred in a play about Elvis. Like many of his contemporaries, Walken's first hero was famous singer Elvis Presley. As a child, he would mimic Presley's trademark hair, and when he became an adult, he wrote his first play, Him, based on the king of rock and roll's afterlife. The play was a look into the inner happenings of Walken's mind, and what we see suggests he's as strange as any of his real-life characters. The play, which Walken starred in during its 1995 off-Broadway run, opens with Elvis in an otherworldly limbo beside a couple of Elvis impersonators and the star's stillborn twin, Rob. Among the strange revelations that Walken revealed in this play is the idea that Rob was visiting Earth and is the reason for the world's posthumous Elvis sightings. Audiences also saw a foam rubber Elvis being tossed back and forth on the stage, along with a recreation of his funeral, where his mourners were only wearing underwear. The second act shows that Elvis is not dead, but faked his demise to escape to Morocco for a planned gender reassignment surgery. The play ended with Elvis leading a low-key life as a truck stop waitress. Reviews were not kind about him, but you have to admit, it was unique. Walken, a pro horse rider. Well, not really. Although he's had to ride horses while working, Walken admits he's never quite liked it. When he was compelled to ride a horse every day during the shoot of Heaven's Gate for a stretch of eight months, he grinned and somehow put up with it. But while playing his villainous role in A View to a Kill, the crew came up with a smart solution for a horse racing shot. Walken recalled that in reality, it was a stuffed horse on a trolley with tires, which the people on set towed behind a truck. By now, it's clear that whether Christopher Walken is making up stories or not, he's surely the kind of character we can't find in anybody or anywhere else. If you know more incredible facts about the man, let us know in the comments section. And before you move on, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon to stay updated about all our latest videos.